What's going man, what's up? And welcome back to another video. This is another reaction video, the last confirmed sighting of four extinct animals by Extinct Zoo. If you wanna watch the original video, the link will be in the description down below, so make sure y'all check that out. And let's get into this one. Go. And this includes some that have only just left us recently. While alive, many of these animals sadly Whoa. were underappreciated by it's people. A tiger horse. It was only after these animals have disappeared that people realize how fascinating they truly were. And when an animal goes extinct, their last photos instantly turn into haunting memories of the internal doom that awaited them. But it's sometimes forgotten that the last photo of an animal doesn't mean it went extinct just then, as many sightings of doomed animals have occurred after the last known photos. Mm. These sightings are perhaps even more somber oh, than photos, as they represent the last time a human has ever laid eyes on a particular creature. And this is four famous extinct animals and their last recorded sightings. The first animal on the list is one that has gained much popularity in recent times. This is a mega lion. reason at that, as it was a magnificent creature. This is the Barbary Lion. This feline was also known as the North African Lion or the Egyptian Lion and inhabited the mountains and deserts of the Maghreb from Egypt to Morocco. Mm. Hunters of this lion claimed that they were the largest of all lions and possessed long manes that were of unique colors not seen in the manes of other lions. Mm. It is believed that they first emerged roughly 100,000 years ago and were extremely successful for the duration of that time period, only beginning to experience trouble after firearms and bounties for it started to spread in the regions where it lived. Man. Very quickly, the hunting of the lion began to take a toll. And Man, it's so crazy that like the most dangerous predator of all time of any animal is like humans. That's so crazy. Like you wouldn't think it because like we're not really as strong or fast, but we just have thumbs and are pretty smart. So that makes us top dog. That's so crazy to me when like all this type of stuff exists. But like I said, we got thumbs and are kind of smart. So fuck all of them, I guess. And by the 1890s, only 26 years after it was officially recorded, its population had been decimated and sightings became very scarce. I want a pet lion, man. On top of this, when sightings were made, it was now usually only of a lone individual. A grim sign, as before, almost all sightings involved groups. And just some 35 years later, in 1925, the last recorded photo of a wild Barbary lion was taken. Sadly, even then, hunting still took place, which unfortunately also included successful. Like, 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 this is so crazy to me. This powerful, j just, just gigantic, powerful, strong beast was taken out by a bunch of milk dads. That's so crazy. Just because we have thumbs and are a little bit smarter, we're like top dogs in the animal kingdom. That's so crazy. Like, we have thumbs and they don't. So they're, they're just bitches, basically. That's so crazy. Hunts. Yet, eventually, the hunting of the animal abruptly ended when in 1942, the last known Moroccan Barbary lion was killed. That's After crazy. which, of course, none other would ever be hunted. This individual was shot by a French colonial hunter who had tracked the lion mm. along a pass in Morocco's high Atlas Mountains. For many, this day marked the official last sighting of the lion. However, the last time a human would ever lay eyes on the giant feline took place over 10 years later, in 1956, when several people on a bus saw a great lion just north of the town of Satif in Algeria. Hopefully the lion was said to have watched the humans. humans for a while before disappearing into a forested area. A forest that was sadly destroyed not long after during the French-Algerian War, likely killing the lion. Fortunately, man, man. some 80 to 100 Barbary lions still live in captivity around the world. The oh, only well, problem is, them. no one knows if they are really true Barbary lions, as no wild one can be tested for comparison. I While guess. debate on if the Barbary lion lives on remains, there is no debate that this next animal, the dodo, is gone for good. The dodo has become an yeah, icon of extinction, and has made various appearances in pop culture. It was a flightless bird that was endemic to the island of Mauritius, a big and belonged chicken. to the Columbidae family, which includes doves and pigeons. Very little is big known about its pigeon. behavior. But from what reports remain, scientists deduced that it preferred woodland areas and feasted on fallen fruits, nuts, seeds, bulbs, roots, and possibly shellfish. The earliest known accounts of the dodo were given by the Dutch in 1598 and were quite mundane as those who made them were starved sailors that were only interested in the plumpness of the dodo, not the fact that it had never been seen before. Mm. They remarked that the dodo was fearless of humans and was easy to catch, 
yet sported a beak which could administer fierce bites. And because it was quite large, it soon became a staple for sailors and introduced invasive animals, which included dogs, pigs, cats, rats, and macaques. The introduction of these macaque? animals was even That's more crazy. detrimental to the dodo population than human hunting, and its population began to rapidly decline. Research has also shown that a series of flash floods added to its losses. To add fuel to the fire, their wooded habitats were also destroyed as well when people who came mm. to the island destroyed them in order to build settlements. On top of that, live specimens were also exported abroad. What's interesting, however, is that as this was taking place and dodo numbers were declining, no one really took notice, and eventually, they practically disappeared. As far as scientists know, the last time anyone for sure saw a dodo was in 1662, less than 100 years after Europeans reached the island. The sighting Damn, was made from stranded sailors, years? who remarked about the strange flight of birds that did not fear them and in fact years. followed them around. Probably less than that. The sailors soon noticed that these That's birds sick. could not fly, but were difficult to catch thanks to their surprising speed. But eventually they caught one, which provided more than enough food. But to their surprise, the dodo made a great noise upon capture, after which the other dodos came forth as to help, but were then made prisoners themselves and subsequently Shh. killed. It's honestly quite sad that the last time the dodos get were back killed in. so nonchalantly. They actually and unfortunately, get back. this somber tone towards the dodo may have continued even after its official extinction date, as the only reliable yet unconfirmed sightings that followed came from the governor of the island, who maintained that he continued hunting dodos for multiple years until 1688, after which he never encountered them again, nor mm. has anyone else, for that matter. Crazy. Unfortunately, the dodo's calm manner towards Hope humans did them no favor, humans too. and the same could be said for Stellar Sea Cow, an extinct Cyrenian described by George Stellar in 1741. Jesus. At the time, its range was limited around the commander islands of the Bering Sea between Alaska and Russia, but during the Pleistocene, its habitat was much more widespread, extending to the North Pacific. It was a giant animal, being the largest Cyrenian ever, but was also truly a gentle giant, as described by Stellar who noted it as a docile social creature that fed on kelp, lived in small families, and communicated by using sighs and so snorting So what was the sounds. point of hunting the Unfortunately, extinction? this gentleness was taken for granted by Stellar and his crew, and it did not help that the sea cow was extremely slow and could not fully submerge due to its buoyancy, making it quite the easy target. Jesus and this proved man. to sadly be the case, with the crew successfully hunting one just a day after discovering it. Eventually, Stellar told others of his discovery, and after Bro. the area man i don't know man like i want humans to like go to another planet or some shit and find aliens right but like with our history of stuff bro as soon as we find something that's like new our first instinct is to like i need that shit like i need that bitch. whether i gotta kill it or bring it alive but i need that bitch like we gotta have this bitch right in front of us so we can study it and touch it study its organs its inside see how it runs now, why do we do that shit, right? Niggas gonna get to an alien planet and immediately be on smoke. Like, that's how that's how I feel about us. Like, we just, we were ready for smoke for no reason. There was no reason to have smoke with this manatee. And they had just, they got smoke. The area became more well-traveled by sailors. It became quite common for fur traders and seal hunters to butcher the animals in masses. Man. This was a huge problem, as the stellar sea cow's population was already abysmal at the time of its finding with an estimated population size of only 2,000 individuals. That's sad, man. Thus, it didn't take long for hunting to completely destroy the remaining sea cow population, like 50 and years. only 27 years after it was officially discovered, it went extinct, with the last official recorded sighting taking place in 1768, Damn, man, when hunters spotted a lone individual in deep water. When seen, it was swimming the opposite direction that the sailor's boat was traveling, but when they turned around, it had vanished and none were ever seen again. It's just cause like we officially. have no balance, man. As nearly 200 years later in 1963, no the official yeah, journal of the USSR announced an unconfirmed yet highly likely sighting. The article stated that a whaling ship had reported a group of large marine mammals grazing on seaweed in shallow water off of Kamchatka. The crew reported seeing six of these animals, ranging from six to eight meters or 20 to 26 feet, Damn, with trunks and split lips that swam very slowly. They claimed to have seen them from 100 meters or 300 feet away. But the very next day, they again encountered the creatures, but this time they were closer and grazing on kelp, a known food of the sea cow. This made their sighting quite compelling, 
with the only contradiction being that they stated that the animals would regularly submerge, which goes against traditional claims that the sea cow could not go fully underwater. Well, maybe After this encounter, the ship went on its way, and sadly since then, no major sighting or that of any merit has been made. In the case of the Stellar Sea Cow, it definitely did not help that so few remained at the time of discovery. But as our next animal, the Great Auk, shows, sometimes numbers don't make a difference. This was another species of flightless bird that mated on rocky remote islands that had easy yeah, access to water no and chance. plentiful food. When not breeding, the Great Auk spent most of its time forging the waters of the North Atlantic, so ranging from northern Spain to the coastlines of Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Ireland, Great Britain, France, the Iberian Peninsula, and the Faroe Islands. It's just a penguin. Many describe this bird as being very similar in appearance to penguins, yet the two weren't closely related with the great auk belonging to the Penguins in family. penis? What is that? Unlike many animals on this list, this bird actually had a long established relationship with Europe, and coexisted rather peacefully, only being occasionally killed by hunters, who described the bird as being rarely frightened, an excellent swimmer, and fish eater. It wasn't until the 18th century that the slaughter of the great auk picked up steam, when pillow industries realized that their down feathers made good stuffing for pillows. Jesus, bro. This exponentially increased the amount of ox that were hunted, which at the time were numbered in the low millions. As demand for their feathers increased, so, so did greedy, demand bro. for their meat, that oil, and crazy. eggs. It also didn't help that sailors used breeding grounds as makeshift landmarks for navigation, thus increasing interactions between themselves and the bird. And by the early 1800s, people began noticing the increasing rarity of this bird, which had once been a common sight. Its newfound rareness actually proved to be more harmful to this majestic creature, as museums started funding people to capture and kill ox so their bodies could be preserved and studied. That's this all proved too much, fun. and in 1830, only one place in the world was known to harbor them, the Great Auk Rock of Iceland. Yet, even here was not safe, as a subsequent volcanic eruption submerged the island, and the survivors had to flee to a lonely even smaller rock known as Eldi. It was here in 1844 that humanity for the last time would lay its hands on a great auk, they probably when two hired else, hunters man. butchered a male and female and destroyed their eggs. The <sighs> hunters, without emotion, stated that the birds struggled as they were strangled, but they made no cries. However, this wouldn't be the last time a great auk was seen. As eight years later, during Christmas, a highly decorated ornithologist, Henry Drummond, made what would be known as the last confirmed sighting of a great auk. He recounted that while on his ship, he spotted a lone bird that he was confident to be a great auk along the banks of Newfoundland. It was aimlessly wandering along the shores, perhaps looking for a mate, not understanding that it may have been the very last of its kind. That's Drummond crazy. states that the bird very quickly began to become smaller and smaller as the ship moved faster, until it finally disappeared forever from humanity's gaze. Good man. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and also checking out our Patreon which we just launched. Here you'll be able to see a sneak. Alright, so everything he just said, do go do to my channel. I don't have a Patreon though. But I'ma make one eventually. But if you enjoyed this one, bro, you, you heard what he said. And um peace, love, and positivity, and I will catch y'all in the next one. It's two options in this world, is you gon' win or lose? Is you gon' take the risk or not, you know you gotta choose Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos